Hi, this is your host, Swapnil Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us once again, Asaf Higal, co-founder and CTO of Logs.io. Asaf, it's great to have you back on the show. Uh, thank you very much. It's good to be back. It's my pleasure. And I mean, we have been covering Logs.io f- f- from its early days, and you folks are starting the log management space, of course, as the name implies, but you folks have been going through your own evolution, some big investments were made, and now you're delivering full stack observability for companies of all sizes. So I want to understand this evolution of logs.io. Sure, happy to do it. So obviously we started a company as as a log analytics company, hence the name logs.io. Uh, and I think it was pretty apparent since day one that addressing observability or addressing production issue requires more than logs. Uh, and the logs tell you a big part of the story, but not the entirety of it. So uh, I think we, you need to complete it with other telemetry information that is coming either from the infrastructure or from the code itself in a form of metrics. Uh, and obviously uh, getting the distributed tracing going to quickly understand and quickly troubleshoot and building all of it. And how would you also explain full stack observability when we look at observability does it overlap with other practices other you can say personas security can be one it it can have impact throughout cost can be one performance can be one so talk about the role of observability which goes beyond logs monitoring tracing so I think there is uh, a few things that go into observability that go beyond log metrics and traces. And log metric and traces are, are basically data types. Uh, they don't constitute observability. Observability means how quickly can I identify and how quickly can I address a problem I have in my production system. Um, there are a t- few things that are really, really important uh, when it comes to observability. One of them is the connection to the business. Uh, so obviously, engineering teams are delivering software in order for the business to run smoothly. Uh, and the relationship between the business needs, uh, or what we call it the SLO, the service level objectives that the engineers are committing to, uh, and the business impact is really important. It's a big part of observability. The other thing, like you mentioned, is security. I think security is being kind of like the security for the production environment is being rolled into the observability as well as cost. Because at the end of the day, these two are trade-offs when it comes to the availability and the ability to deliver the service. So the ability to understand what is my objective to the business, the ability to ensure that I can meet these objectives, the ability to troubleshoot quicker, uh, and the ability to do it in a secure uh, and cost, uh, uh, cost-sensitive cost environment is big parts of observability. And what kind of challenges you see organizations face, you know, when it comes to full stack observability, which may also have led logs, you know, .io to tackle these challenges? I think part of the challenges that we see in observability is organizations not realizing that this is not merely a technology play, but this is a culture play. Uh, and when we go into observability and ask them, do you have SLOs? Um, can you measure them? Um, can you uh, measure how long does it take you to address an issue? What's the mean time to resolution? Um, most organizations don't have it or don't have it at the level that they need to have it. Uh, they may have it defined, they may have it in the process, and it all starts with the objectives and they don't have the objective. And I think this is a big change that that organization need to have because uh, the way engineers uh, build and work things, they like everything to be templated. So every service has its own way of uh, the same way of monitoring it or creating observability around it. But in reality, some services are more critical to the business than others and require a lot more attention. Uh, and the ability to prioritize within the services, the ability to understand the relationship between the code that I'm writing and the impact to the business um, and the impact if my code is not running properly is something which is lacking 
uh, with the organization is basically the connection between the business and the technology, which sometimes lacking. And also, in addition to how developers like to look at things, can you also talk about the other challenges developers are facing? One is, of course, the explosion of data. We are generating a lot of data and we are also collecting a lot of data. Now we can talk about event data and we can also talk about other business data. Talk a bit about how, what kind of challenges creates for developers. And when it comes to challenges, is it about resources? Is it about time? Is it about cost? And then how does Log look at it? Yeah, it's a very good question. I think most organizations collect more data than they actually need. Uh, the impact of collecting more data than you actually need is, first of all, cost. Second of all, complexity of troubleshooting, because now you have to look at a lot of data which is irrelevant to you. Uh, try to sift it out, try to uh, uh, understand what is relevant to what is less relevant. Uh, and this has been a big challenge in observability. How do I know which data is useful to me and which not? So we at Logs.io developed the capability to understand which data is actually being used and which are not, which is not being used. Uh, we're actually surprised that most organizations, at least 60% of the data that they're collecting is never being used uh, or not being used in the way it's intended to be used. Um, and just clearing that, turning it into something which is a lot more meaningful, either aggregating it and removing the detailed data or the ability to basically store it in a much lower tier, the ability to tier the data uh, is really critical, both from a cost perspective, but also from a, the ability to troubleshoot quicker perspective. Are there other players in the space which are trying to address the same problem or you feel that you are kind of pioneer or that is what led to your evolution where you're trying to compete with them? I just want to understand where is the market in terms of solving some of these problems for developers? I think, again, I think most of the players in this market are trying to add more and more functionality to their product. They're less concerned about the amount of data that's being used because they, and us included, is making money off the amount of data that is being sent to us. So they're adding more and more products, more and more capabilities, more and more function, more and more dashboards. Uh, but the reality is that we see that the mean time to resolution uh, is just increasing year over year. So it's not really helping to add more data and more dashboards and more visualizations. Um, I personally do not know of any other vendor that took this approach and saying, yes, we're going to make sure that the data that you send us is actually being used in the right way. Uh, and we're going to give you the tools and the capabilities to either aggregate the data that you don't have and turn it into metrics and save it in a much lower cost and for a longer uh, longer period, or be able to, to tier it and save it in a cold storage and, um, and be able to just square it in the exact same way, just slower, just because you don't need it for that amount of time. And you folks, if I'm not wrong, also recently announced a new UI called Explore. That kind of improves the user log management experience Talk a bit about the idea behind this uh, UI and how does it address some of the problems that we just talked about? It's a good question. I think if you look at most observability product, their UI around log management is, is roughly the same. The ability to search, the ability to filter, the ability to create visualization out of it. Uh, it's basically the same and I think there is definitely time for something new in this. Um, so something new in this is a new UI, which first of all, it's a lot faster. We invested a lot in making sure that the UI is faster. Uh, we've introduced a new query language that is easier and simpler to use and easier to understand. Uh, we've introduced uh, generative AI inside our UI. So you can ask questions your data, you can create a conversation with your logs, uh, which is a new paradigm of interacting with data. Um, so we've kind of like looked at the world that it is today as opposed to how the world looked 10, 15 years ago when the first log management uh, was built. Uh, and we've designed something which is more suitable to this. It's easier to use. It's lightweight, uh, faster, and gives you a lot more functionality. And if you look at this UI, 
can you also talk about the role it is going to play not only in Locke's longer strategy, but also for developers' workflow? I think uh, the UI that we released with Explorer is uh, kind of like the tip of the iceberg with uh, a revolution or a, uh, to, the, to the UI and the way people interact with, uh, with observability data. Uh, the ability to converse directly with the data, the ability to ask questions, the ability to automatically correlate all of this information and understand whether I am meeting my objectives or not meeting my objective is something that we're going to introduce to it. So the same way, uh, um, if you look at it in the past, I mean, search engines existed in the past and even before Google, uh, but they came with like a single line and you could just basically ask question, you get what you want. Uh, I think it's going to be changing for observability and there's going to be fewer and fewer dashboards that you're going to go between one and the other and more conversation with the data that uh, uh, that exists today and everything is going to be centralized in something which is easier to consume and understand. Uh, if you look at observability products today, they're very rich in functionality, uh, but they're very complex in usability. And when you want to troubleshoot something in production, you want something light, efficient, quick, smart, uh, and uh, that's going to give you the answer that you want. And I think this is a big change that uh, we're seeing in this market, and definitely the Explorer is the first uh, step into that direction. Perfect. So now talk about, you know, what is the further evolution look like? You know, we just described the surface. What are the other things that you folks are working on? Of course, Open360 platform is also, you know, kind of, you know, automation, Gen AI. Talk about Open360 platform and also how does it complement uh, the new UI Explorer? So the Open360 platform uh, is a way to link between the business and the needs of the business to the technology. And uh, this is a way for engineering teams to kind of like show the business their adherence to the service level objectives uh, and their ability to troubleshoot uh, quicker, their ability to resolve issues. And this is kind of like what the Open360 is about. Um, I think one of the things that you're going to see more and more, uh, at least for us, is a lot of more ad hoc implementation and ad hoc uh, uh, creation of, of data, which is going to be intelligent uh, and less formalized as it, as it is today. So this ability is going to be, uh, uh, you're going to see it more from the Explorer, you're going to see it more for Open360, <clears throat> just understanding what the issue is uh, and the ability to create visualization on the fly with a conversation is uh, is something that uh, you're going to see more and more. Can you also talk about not from the perspective of vendors like logs.io, but also from the perspective of the market, what kind of new workloads, what kind of new use cases that you're seeing, which are not only creating new challenges for developers, but can also be seen as new opportunities for folks like logs. Every month and every year, there is introduction of new services that's making development more flexible uh, and, and easier for the developers to develop and release code to production. But this creates complexity on, uh, on monitoring it and uh, on troubleshooting it. So what we're seeing is that uh, with all the new services that's coming out, uh, there is an increased complexity in the observability. Uh, and the solution today is creating more and more ways of looking at the data. And uh, we think there's going to be a different solution to it in the future. Of course, these days, one of the hottest topics is Gen AI. Now, that is to be seen uh, whether it will just go through this hype cycle or it will become you know, one of the blips in the larger scheme of things. We have seen these things so many times, but right now we are excited about Gen AI. What kind of role of AI or Gen AI do you see in observability space? What kind of impact of AI, Gen AI is on observability or at the same time, do you also see any role of observability for those folks who are running AI workloads? Yeah, I think it's twofold. Obviously, the the companies uh, that are running AI workloads are are going to be required of a slightly different type of observability uh, that's going to monitor both the data privacy, data security, 
and, uh, and cost, uh, because these models are sometimes can be costly to run. Uh, so I think this is definitely something which is, uh, we see it in the market and, uh, and, and addressing. I also think that Gen AI has a lot of potential within observability itself to really solve hard problems that uh, traditionally has been very, very difficult to solve. Um, and uh, I think this is something we're going to release in the, in the near future. And I think it's very, very exciting. I'm actually, I was extremely surprised to, to see the level of results that can be achieved by Gen, Gen AI um, if you know how to use it properly when it comes to observability. When it comes to cloud, I look at three Cs. Of course, cloud is there, cost is there, and complexity is also there. When it comes to observability, does it add to that complexity? Does it add to that cost? Or the approach logs is taking is to not only reduce the cost, but also reduce the complexity. I think we want to reduce the complexity of uh, observability. And this is something that we definitely are proud of and been doing it for years now. Uh, and I think it goes hand in hand with reducing the cost because the cost of observability right now is derived by the amount of data being sent. And the amount of data being sent is also a good contribution to the complexity. And uh, so if we reduce the complexity, we'll be able to also reduce the cost. Um, so. I think this is something that uh, definitely we're looking into. Now, of course, uh, you and I will talk again when you folks are working on something new, when the announcements are ready. But just tease us, give us a teaser. What kind of things we can expect from logs this year? I think you're going to see a lot more AI, not only generative AI, but also uh, other AIs that finally maturing. Uh, it's been always been a challenge when it comes to, uh, um, to uh, observability. Um, I think... There is going to be a lot of automation coming out of Logs.io, and you're going to see it um, kind of like a, a different paradigm of running observability. And uh, less and less dashboards and alerts, uh, and uh, more and more insights and understanding and automation. Asaf, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about the evolution of logs, which I think is aligned with the evolution that I, we are seeing in the market, the ecosystem. Uh, so thanks for sharing all those insights, and I would love to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir.